Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking about an indie game today, one that you probably haven't heard of as yet, but you will hear about quite a bit from me going forwards because it does represent a side of the industry that I would like to see more of. It represents a type of creativity about game development that I would like to encourage more of and it certainly speaks to me on an emotional level. On an, evo It's a very evocative game. It's very thought-provoking, and it's just a very interesting game in general. It is called The Kids We Were, and it comes to us from a tiny development studio of five people out of Japan. And it was previously available on Android, but it is now coming to Nintendo Switch and Steam. I don't really follow the Android space, so I had no idea that this game existed until a Switch code landed for me. I'm glad I discovered it as a result of that. So I think the developers have done the right thing in moving it off the Android platform and giving people who don't usually like mobile games a chance to experience it. That being said, it has been quite well celebrated on Android. I believe it has got some kind of award with Google themselves because it is not what you would expect a mobile game to be these days. Usually when we talk about mobile games now, we're talking about those kind of gacha microtransaction field things. This is not that. It is just a straightforward, narrative-driven adventure game. It was supported by ads on the Google platform. You will pay a premium up front for it for, on Switch and Steam, but you'll never be asked to pay more money for it from that point. You can just enjoy it for what it is. So it is a proper game. It's not a mobile thing. And yeah, I want to use this video to talk about what it says with regards to nostalgia. So you can go to digitallydownloaded.net to read my full reviews, uh, my full thoughts on the game itself in a review. But I'm going to use this video to talk about it in a broader context because in playing this game, I was actually reminded of another title that I'd played quite a long time ago now. And I think that the two of them, plus some other related games, say something about the Japanese game development mindset, the creators that are building these things. And I do see a difference between Japanese game development and Western game development as a result of that. So to describe quickly what this game is about without spoilers, The Kids We Were is set in a kind of regional city in Japan, a suburban area where there aren't high rise buildings, but it's not kind of countryside rural either. And it's a time travel story. So you play it as a kid who has been going through a lot He's just discovered that his father has died. This is not a spoiler. This happens in the first chapter. His father has died. His sister is quite sick. And what we know about the mother suggests that she's also quite ill. So, you know, he's in a, he's in a difficult emotional spot. And he discovers a time machine. And in doing so, his father, well, no, sorry, not his father, himself, 33 years from now, old enough to be his father, shows up and tells him he has to go back in time to change the future. He wasn't able to in that time loop, but he's sending himself back to the past to hopefully get it right this time around. Time travel stories are always a bit nonsense, but point is, Guy tells himself to go back in time to the 80s to try to turn his future life around. So he does, and that is the kind of the context of the story. No more spoilers from there. That is the first chapter, and from there you find out whether he's able to do so or not. In playing this game, I was actually reminded of a dear, 3DS, sorry, a 3DS title that I played some years before called Attack of the Friday Monsters. That itself was also a very small scale game. It never got a physical release. It was for an eShop download only, and it was a tiny, tiny game. And it was largely overlooked, I think, but I absolutely loved when, it when I played it. And it's because both of these games have this same quality in giving you the role of youth in kind of regional urban Japan, it reflects back on this kind of nostalgia for youth where everything is this huge adventure and even though the backdrop where you're living, where your characters are kind of wandering around, even though that's quite mundane, there's a, such a strong sense of fantasy that runs all the way through it. And that seems to me to be a very strong nostalgia that comes from the creators, that they actually have this memory of what it's like to be youth. They kind of fantasize about being back at that time where it's a kind of simpler time, I guess. And this is their manifestation of those feelings of nostalgia and fantasy. And then you see that this theme kind of plays out in other games, which are not 
in themselves within the game nostalgic like the kids we were or the attack of the friday monsters were but they represent a nostalgia that perhaps comes from the creators or the lead uh, artists behind the games the likes of persona 4 which takes place in regional urban japan and you play as a group of kids that go on these wildly fantastic adventures that's one mother's another one where it takes the mundane of suburban life and turns it into this ridiculously fantastical adventure these games are not uncommon in japan and if you kind of think about them and, and actually look for this theme through them you see it reoccur quite a lot so i actually asked the developer on the kids that we were i asked him for an interview for my magazine which you can check out if you're a subscriber on patreon why that we see this theme occurring through so many japanese games and the response was quite interesting he said Another, uh, the theme of childhood memories is universal, but perhaps it is a Japanese idea to express it in the medium of games. Another important factor might be that the childhood of many middle-aged men in Japan coincides with the introduction of the NES. And all of that makes sense. So the guys that grew up in Japan playing the NES and the Game Boy and now the kind of lead creators on a lot of video games and that, in part, it probably explains why the kids that we were has that NES blocky aesthetic about it. So there is that in part. But the first part of his response was the one that was really interesting to me, that this is a kind of a, a Japanese way of looking at things. Because if we look at the Western side of game development, we have the same thing. It's the same aged people that are now running projects uh, as game developers and they grew up with the NES and the Game Boy and all those other consoles as well. But how it's manifested from there for them is a little bit different because, as we know, as has been reported quite commonly, the Western game developers are very fixated on the idea of parenthood these days. And we're seeing a lot of games where people are working through, I guess, their issues of being young parents by writing stories about parents from the likes of God of War and... Uh, the Last of Us, the kind of father figures that are in those games. We see a lot of Western game developers hitting that point in their lives where that becomes a theme that they want to express through their art. So the Japanese developers are at the same point again. They've probably got young kids themselves. They're probably going through the process of being parents, but their manifestation of their kind of middle age. I don't want to say crisis because I'm not suggesting that's what it is, but their manifestation of that point in their lives is taking them back to youth and giving them a medium with which to re-experience the feelings that they had through their youth. And I'm not suggesting that one is better than the other, of course. They're both very well worthwhile themes to explore. It's just fascinating that because the video game industry is still young and growing up in real time, most of us have been playing games for as long as games have been around and we've kind of grew, grown up with them. So we still haven't got to that point where there was an industry before the people making the games kind of were, were around. And watching that happen, we're actually seeing different themes emerge through games. And 20 years from now, of course, we're going to see different themes as two things happen. Firstly, the, the people that are at the, the point now where they're leading game projects will be at a different stage in their lives and also will have a new generation of young creators that are hitting the point where they're leading projects of their own and their projects will represent the various thoughts and pressures that they're experiencing at their point in time as well and I think this is all this is all just fascinating this is an evolution of video games thing and that we see it happen in these kind of humble little tiny games like the kids we were is a good sign for the industry it means that from the very biggest games right down to the very littlest games, there is this exploration of ideas and these discussion points that we can have about games. Anyhow, that's enough of this video. Do let me know your own thoughts in the comments. There isn't too much that I want to show you with this game because it is quite short. It's about six hours long, so the footage you've seen here is about the first hour or so, and I don't want to talk too much about the game itself for fear of giving good stuff away. It's a very... It's a game you have to play for yourself, so I'm trying to be vague about it in this video. Do let me know your own thoughts in the comments about this theme, but also once you're playing the game, let me know what you think about it. It comes out in a couple of weeks on Switch, I think, and then 2022 on Steam. Uh, and then to run through the usual drill, 
If you do enjoy the videos, if you do enjoy what I'm doing, please do mash that like and subscribe button. That way you won't miss any as I publish them. And if you want to support what we're doing at digitallydownloaded.net across both the website and this YouTube channel, please consider backing us on Patreon, which you can do for a dollar a month or more. You can back us for as much as you like, but the minimum entry point is a dollar a month. And in doing so, not only do you support this free stuff we do, but you also get a monthly magazine of which this interview that I referenced in this video is there this month. So it's the cheapest magazine you'll get each month. You won't get a cheaper one for a, than, than a dollar a month. And I think it's pretty good. If you're into your Japanese art and culture, then we go a little bit beyond video games to talk about some other things, and I think you'll find it interesting. All right, then, that's it for this video, and we will see you next time.